Or okay. I turned it on. Now we are. Okay. There we are. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. The the big red <laughs> circle with the X in it is not record. It, it's that's the leave studio button. <laughs> Reseller clickbait podcast. <laughs> Reseller clickbait podcast episode eighty one, and we are back after a week off for Christmas break. Corey, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas back at you. But that, okay. that's it. That that's, Christmas is over now. I we're know. ready to move on. It is. It, it is officially like we're we're past it. Yeah, it's been a week now that Christmas, but I'm still festive. I'm still festive. I'm wearing my Christmas. I still got the Santa beer going on. I see you've taken your poinsettias down in the back. Oh, I took the decorations down while the kids were unwrapping presents. <laughs> like, I was tearing uh, stuff down around them. <laughs> no, still, we still have our tree up out there, but yeah, but in got, here we we de decorated. In the office, you are done. I still yep. got my. Christmas Day, Commonwealth Hudson back here, still festive with this Santa hat, and and I'm still going, still going strong, still listening to Christmas music, like every day, twenty four seven, still watching the the Hallmark Christmas movies are still playing through New Year, and so you gotta wear them um, out for next year. You gotta save some of that magic. Oh, I got a whole DVR full of them. I'm I'm good to <laughs> I'm good to go, but uh, so did you did you have a good Christmas? We did. We had a great Christmas. We had all the kids came out and the grandkids came out and we got to hang out Christmas Eve. We got to, got to have chili. I know we mentioned we were going to do something a little different. We had chili, yes. right? Yes. So yep. you had chili for Christmas dinner. We did. It was a new one, but it, it turned out good. It was a pretty good spread for a chili night. Cool. I had the, the traditional like ham, ham, scalloped potatoes, you know, that that sort of thing. one of my favorite meals. I think that would almost be if I had like if I was on death row. I think that would be like my <laughs> death row like last meal is you know ham and scalloped potatoes and of course you know some good old fashioned macaroni and cheese. I would have craft of course you know. I don't know on homemade, death row, I don't I'd, know. I'd have a hard time concentrating on food. And cheese. Well, you know they come around. I guess so. I'm told they come around. They ask you you know what you want for your last meal and. That's always a good choice. I've never donuts. met a donut I didn't like. But a, um Oh, we had a discussion about mac and cheese yesterday. Teresa and I did. Okay. We were we were trying to figure out how Who they won? got that glowing yellowish orangish color and whether or not that was dyes or not. So we had to go do some some deep dive on craft mac and cheese. Uh it used to have a lot of dyes in it to get that going, but yeah. I guess they took they took out some of those dyes and yep. so the macaroni ended up to be like this kind of a pale color and people didn't like it. Even though it was yep. the same flavor, people couldn't get it. It's like the time that I wanted to have festive macaroni and cheese, so I, I put green food coloring in it to make it like Christmassy green macaroni and cheese. And uh, it was <laughs> it horrible. did not come out as festive a color as what I thought it was going to. Uh, and it tricked your brain. It tasted the same, but you know, eating that bowl of like it's kind of this putrid sort of a green. I'm not I'm not really sure, but uh, but I ate it. Because it was craft macaroni like, and cheese. Green yeah, I won't not. even say what it sounds like. It, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> but yeah, that's, we found out that it, at a certain point they did take them out and then they had to make some adjustments. And it sounds like they're all natural colorings now. I mean, it's yes. not like natural cheese, but they're using natural ingredients to get the color they want. So like turmeric and paprika and things like that to try yeah. to adjust the and color. just that natural natural yummy goodness is that a is that an ingredient yummy goodness i technically yeah i think it's on the ingredient I think that's what list. they put i should look i should look at my box no we don't it's have 100 of, right? of your daily serving yeah yeah <laughs> and i have it 100 percent like every day i think i would probably eat mac and cheese every day i'd probably get tired of it anyway enough of that yeah i see your decorations are not man check out this shirt you are you that's not Is that's there... a festive looking shirt yeah, for, for right Christmas there. being over, I have my non-Scrooge outfit on. These are all Christmas gifts, like the hat. Like, see the we got a Pops hat. Ooh, your own. And then custom we got pop. this fancy shirt here. So it's got the grandbabies on it over here, and one over here. Oh, so we got that both is grandbabies cool. on it. Yeah, we got spoiled. Who uh, who got those for you? Was that a Teresa gift or was that the? 
these were God. all like all the kids together chipped in and and did it so that they could just and, do the one gift. They're kind of cheap. They're definitely my kids. I would have expected <laughs> more presents, but they're like, we'll just put all of our names on it. We'll say it's from everybody. So I just got two, but I love them. So well, yeah, a grandbaby shirt you can't get better yep. than that. Yeah, I, I yeah I open gifts for like two days straight from like Christmas Eve. That I had with Jill and Nancy and stuff out at the cabin, or over at Jill's. We weren't out at the cabin. Well, I guess earlier in that week, we were out at the cabin for like two or three days. We had company in from out of town from Texas, and we played games, and we had presents and prizes. And then Christmas Eve, we had presents. And then Christmas, with all the family over. And we, see, I'm just still, I'm still festive, but... And I'm glad it's well here. This will help your festive nets. But first, okay. sorry about the lights in here. If you guys are seeing what I'm seeing on my screen, my lights on my screen keep getting darker and lighter. But this will help you with your festiveness. Our kids, okay. the, the the cheap, shitty ass little kids they are sometimes. <laughs> we thought we got a whole bunch of Christmas gifts. Like like the kids okay. each got gifts from us. But then there was yeah. a big pile by Teresa and a big pile by me, and we're all opening gifts, and everybody's done except me and Teresa. Okay. So then we start opening the rest of our gifts kind of one at a time. And yeah. after the first couple of gifts we kind of caught on, we were opening stuff that the kids had stolen from our own house and wrapped <laughs> up throughout the year. So we got like eight gifts that we had already owned that they had just like, given back to us at Christmas. Like Tupperware containers that you sent food home with them. Yeah, like in, home decor. And, and, they, okay. Like <laughs> fake eggs that were in a basket on one of the counters. And like one of the little signs from back on my bookshelf. And yeah, they just kind of uh, randomly took stuff from around the house and gave it back to us at Christmas. That's fun, though. I love that. You wonder why. I love that you, idea. You wonder you why I'm ready for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting to be that time though. I'm I I I I'm pretty much festive all the time, but I don't. I'm getting a bit festive out, festive, festive it. That's, I'm, I'm what is back the word? to business. Back to, normal. Oh, I haven't the, done anything. Was normal. <laughs> I've been on I've been on vacation this this week. Historically, this is my vacation week. Yep. And. Uh, so I haven't done anything that I haven't had to do. I did my shipping, of course, but other than that, but, and you know, the Santa beard's getting a little bit dirty in here. You know, the bleaching is kind of this in the time. edge. I love here. this time of year because it's the new year's getting ready to start, which means we have all the numbers for the first time in this business. We have all the numbers yeah. from an entire year, like January to January. We have a full set of numbers to go look at for reports. Yes. And that that is that's my festive time of year. That I get to go look at numbers and decide what we're going to do for next year and start looking at growing the business based on real data. Yeah. So that's that's exciting for me. So yeah, put the stockings away and get the calculator out. It it's time to kick it's, 2024's butt. Yes. I'm looking forward to that. And we're going to be talking about that here in this episode coming up, but I had mentioned last time it is the the end of the Santa beard, it, it is. is time. But you weren't to, supposed to even have to that. You were supposed to come without that. I was. I'm disappointed. But I, like in you. I said, I'm still festive, but we're going to we're going to get rid of that right now and remedy that whole situation. Uh, the end of the Christmas season, heading into the new year. We're going to do that right now. There, that's better. Back to normal. <laughs> Well, you kind of normal. Smooth shaven. Yes. Looks Shave like you I lost usually, 20 pounds. I did. I, it feels like it on my face with uh, <laughs> without all that extra, you know, beard weight. I don't know. Is it is that a thing? Beard weight? I don't feel weighted down. I should have. I should. That's what I should have done. I should have weighed myself. It is. It, it is real. And it, I don't think it's actual weight. I think it's perceived weight. Your, your beard yes. just makes you feel heavier. Yeah. Because look how look how like. Tiny my head looks. I have a like a tiny <laughs> little I have like a tiny little head. It's usually fuller because I, I usually always have a beard. So here probably my beard goes quickly. So probably by next episode, you know, I'll have another full beard. You gotta pull that hat there, down but... a little lower in the front. The okay. the eyebrows aren't quite back to normal yet. So no, gotta... they're not. Look at that. 
my eyebrows and my it's scary. <laughs> so pull that down. But with a your bit, hat, but, you can't even tell. Yeah. And that's usually I have the hat on. So yeah, we're back to normal here. Or getting getting well, back to normal. normal. New year. New uh yeah, normal for me. Jill always <laughs> says when I you Subjective. know, when I got that look, she whenever I shave, she looks, she's like, Oh, you look like um do you know who Marshall Applegate or Apple White is? Apple White, uh, yep. Marshall. Yep. <laughs> ah, look at that side by side comparison. That is, that is a pretty good comparison. He's, I was thinking Fire Marshal Bill, but we'll we'll accept okay. we'll accept this one too. <laughs> yeah, he was like the Hell Bop, the Hell Bop Comet like cult guy that got all those people to sell. Got my my Marshall Apple White going on right now. Mom always used to tell us if we made a funny face and did it too often, it would stick. So I'm glad that one went away and it didn't yeah. stick and you could try again <laughs> next year. Well, like I said, I'll be I'll be growing this out here pretty quick. And it'll probably be about February before my eyebrows get back to to normal color. I get, everybody said, oh, you could put some like, you know, makeup or whatever in, in there. It's like, nah, I'm not going to bother with that. I don't that. miss the Santa beard, but I will say that a little bit of scruff actually does does pretty yes. good for you. Yeah. So it'd I be good off, to see some of that come back. I took off 20 pounds in probably 20 years in my look. Yeah. You know, feel my like little I'm, baby like face. doing a podcast with a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Timmy? Oh, I tell you, yeah. We're not going to be doing a podcast with 12-year-olds later this week. Though we got a no. couple of old guys that we're going to hang out with. We got the last of the holiday live tour series for the, I guess, yep. 2023 2024 holiday live tour the series season. with the um New Year's or the like the the new the new year show. You know, today is actually New Year's Day, New Year's Monday the first. So we are recording well, this. Today's New Year's Eve. It, we released this on New Year's Day. Yes. Well, today, yeah, if they're watching, it's it's New Year's Day. So happy New Year's Eve, Corey. I see what you did there. Do you have right anything, uh, you. you know, I was doing that whole time warp thing, you know, thinking ahead that. Yeah, that's too much today for my when brain. This comes out. Do you have anything planned for New Year's Eve tonight or last night? What'd you do nope, last we... night, Corey? <laughs> now it's, 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 it's Monday already. You I'll do let last you know night? when it happens. <laughs> um, no, we're not planning on doing it. I mean, we don't really partake per se. Yeah, we we pretty much just sit around, and watch a couple of movies, and I'm usually in bed by ten. Okay. Teresa Teresa usually stays up just to watch the ball drop on TV, but yeah. Uh, so you got not really a movie big holiday out? Year. What Kind of movie. What's on the movie schedule? Are you still watching Christmas? I'm still watching Christmas movies. The mm. Hallmark Channel still playing the Christmas movies twenty four seven. And uh, you know, I actually watched a movie not last the night before last night. Have Have you ever watched the TV series Monk? Yeah, yeah. They made a They Monk. made a new movie on Netflix. They brought back all the old cast from the TV show. Okay, yeah. Was that uh, Tony Tony Shaloub? Was that the, the main actor name. in? I just call him in Monk. that show. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that was always a good show, and I liked him. Uh, I liked that guy in. Uh, did you ever see Galaxy Quest, the movie Galaxy yep. Quest with Tim Allen yep. and stuff? He was uh, whatever the science officer or the mechanic or whatever they call it, chief. Yeah, we watched chief engineer. But we watched um, the Monk movie last the night before last, and that was that was pretty decent. So we'll have to find something to watch. But bowl of popcorn, movie, and bed by ten. That's New Year's Eve cool. for us. Yeah, we have a bunch of. Family, all the family will come over next door to my folks, and we have a big spread of food, and we'll probably play a bunch of games and and just you know hang out until the uh, till the ball drops, and then pretty much disbands right after that. You know, hugs and kisses all around for the new year. And um, I think all our kids are probably getting together in the town where they live. I think that the kids are all gonna get together and do something like that. But okay, that sounds horrible to me. <laughs> you're just not a festive guy all the way around are you just i, I am it, well, happiest the, when i'm not around people <laughs> okay all right Things you're just not a people real person fast. no okay <laughs> it's very i actually really enjoy being around people it, like uh -huh. i don't know it's it, it's the what? introvert thing i really do enjoy being around people but it's very draining so it, okay. it, you got to do it in moderation we do it a few times a year and that's enough 
Yeah, I, I, I'm probably the one in the group that is the is the drain. I'm the I'm the main drain on <laughs> the main on drain. The, you know, yeah, because I'm always always on the go. But so I was saying, I was talking there. The holiday live tour series was uh, ending this Thursday night, January the fourth, eight p.m. Eastern. I'm super excited. We got. Man, the the up and coming rising star in the YouTube community, Caleb, the old paths, yep. and Chris, seasoned, seasoned grizzled, grizzled veteran, Chris, old school picker, two old and, guys, uh, yeah, two old guys reselling podcasts are going to be our guests, and we're going to be, you know, we're going to beat that dead horse that everybody does this time of year, and all the shows that are coming out are, you know, goals. Um, what's coming up, you know, what kind of goals you met in 2023, what kind of goals you got for 2024, and then just general nonsense. We got some giveaways, you know, maybe some see, new resellers. I see Caleb met one of his goals. I, I went to, I got up this morning and looked at my phone. I see he hit his thousand subs on his channel. Yes, man. And that was quick. Yep. That was. Yep. He did good. He's a lot of guys. Um, so the city, Shane, he was 2,000. Yeah. He's up there. I think Archie, Bix, Biscuit Butt, didn't he just get to 1,000? Yeah, they're all making uh, it look easy. <laughs> no, I need to get on the ball here. You know, I my yeah. aspirations are not for... Uh, you, us. Look look at the sub count below. <laughs> it's oh, not yeah, there either. We were, we were trying to... We have one day. We have today, Corey. We were trying to get to that 600 today. subs anyway. And we, since this doesn't come out till tomorrow, need maybe like eight or nine more. Maybe people will see this on Monday morning. They'll tell their, you know, tell their friends, tell their family, hey, New Year, go out there, hit that sub button on the reseller clickbait podcast. And uh at least I think at least we have get I think we have one less towards. sub than we did when we asked people to sub last <laughs> yeah. time. So we're yeah, killing it. It would we said sub, not unsub, <laughs> but uh yeah, it's fun. And and you know, the channel's growing, we're having fun. The audio side, if you're listening on, you know, Spotify or iTunes or Google Podcasts or whatever, that's that's still steady, getting really good that listens. Side does Is that what better, right? Like we do better on the audio side, right? Uh, not, not, it's, it is comparable. It's right up there. Sometimes we do a little bit better, um, depending on a, on a day to day, but overall we get, we get more, more views here on YouTube, but, uh, what, so we're looking forward to having Chris and Caleb on Thursday night, um, and finishing up. I enjoyed doing the lives. That's, you know, one of the things interacting with everybody. We got some more, uh, I don't know that we're going to do many games, but we do have prizes. We have good prizes if, um, you know, maybe for some new resellers that are out there, maybe some some things that they might be interested in or uh, some just general reseller. Just give away old people prizes since it's, it's four old guys yes. going to be on there. Yeah. <laughs> just get like yeah. denture cream and <laughs> some, yes. some Mylanta. So that is coming up quick Thursday, man, just a couple of days. And now we're already a new year. We're already the, yeah. a year has passed. That year went fast. And I'm sure one of the things that you will talk about is this was kind of like you're completing your first full year as a reseller, kind of where first, you kind of have yep. that data, where you're getting into that tax time and, and stuff like that. So that'll be interesting to hear some of that. And, um, and oh, another thing that's coming up quick is the Planes to Profit meetup. That's what. Yeah, that's going to take up a lot of our initial, the, a lot of our first few months of the new year is just finishing the plans for that and, yes. and getting down to that. So, and that's what February. It's that. what towards the end of fe, towards the end of February, right? Yep. February twenty third and twenty fourth. It's right at the end of February, so we're right. Okay, just. Just right before spring hits, and you were telling me that uh, the tickets were selling fast. So if yeah. people are people are you know uh, if they didn't buy them as a great Christmas gift, you know Now's that would have been a great Christmas gift. Or you know if you're taking back all that junk that somebody bought you that you really Stuff didn't want for want. Christmas, yeah, you <laughs> could you know get that money. Don't go. Don't put that back on a credit on your Amazon account. Get. Can you buy a ticket on Amazon for the planes of profit? You can't. No. But 
I mean, if if that's the route you gotta go, contact me. I'll find something I like on Amazon, and we'll just make a trade. Like make, there we you could go. we could barter some tickets. There you go. That's there's yeah. a plan. But so that we is are, coming up. We are quick. reaching out. We got a couple of of pretty cool speakers that that could be really fun to watch. Uh huh. That we're trying to line up. It, it's not a hundred percent done yet, so I can't say exactly what. Um, but if the if the two people we have lined up to come speak actually it come through and it sounds like they might it, it could yeah. be a really i mean that really adds something to the event so we're looking forward to it yeah well even without the speakers i mean just events that that thrifting party bus yep. um is is cool then you know the meal the meetup uh you know kind of for the meal everything contained right there at the at the hotel or well not the meal or i guess you're not thrifting at the hotel what am i talking about but well, yeah we could thrift at the hotel check out There'll be a link down below. Go check out the planes to profit. <laughs> get get your tickets now because they are they are going quick and there's less than yeah. less than two months or whatever. Less than sixty. Yeah, we're down days. to like fifty fifty two days or something 50 like that. Some so it's days, coming so. pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that is exciting. And so, yeah, just getting into the to the new year. I'm I'm kind of looking for you know I I took this last week off this week between christmas and new year's had always historically been my vacation time and um, i forget if i talked about that in the uh, in the intro or not but i'm i'm not doing a thing i didn't do a thing this week reseller wise except for ship i did you know sell stuff and i had some sales which were few and far between because my first payout of the new year is uh is going to be pretty pretty dismal <laughs> it's yeah it's going to be i actually think i'm going to owe ebay money by the end of uh this next week the 26th the day after christmas was the most difficult day to to just yes. get up and go out and we didn't go on vacation mode or anything so we had to pack and i yeah. think we had close to 60 orders come through over the christmas wow. break there that weekend yeah so we had to we had to force ourselves to get up and go record and pack and it was just rough but it seemed like that flipped a switch and yeah we were just right back into new year's mode pretty pretty much the very next day after that we were good yeah, to go um, we were excited to get started again i i still just been in festive mode and <laughs> but i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to getting back i'm gonna i'm going to do that tuesday tuesday morning I'm getting back out in the in the office. I'm taking today off and tomorrow, which is I'm taking today off and tomorrow, which is today if you're watching it. So I won't be doing anything today, tomorrow, or wait. Now I'm confused. When am I going back Sounds to work? Like soon. Lot. We're going with soon. I'll be back, we're going, back we're going out soon. in the in the new office, full full production going. I got uh some things for Christmas. I got a new router. Uh, a new router and a a um, new a wireless adapter for my computer out there in the garage because all of the router and everything's in the house. And so hopefully that'll pick up some of the speed that I need. And I'm looking forward to doing that. We'll be and getting an internet see, upgrade here too. We were talking oh, about yeah. that earlier. We actually had, we, we're out in the middle of the country, so we don't have good internet. Um, yeah, but we did have an internet company put in fiber and we got on the list and, and we're scheduled for this Wednesday to actually get hooked up. Oh, so, so it's fiber that's coming in. It's fiber that's coming in. Ooh, yep. You they, are going to be. Yeah. The way it happened, the way they dug it in was a little bit weird for us because <laughs> yeah. we're out here and we just look out the window one day and somebody's digging a trencher across our entire acreage <laughs> without permission. <laughs> and it, we got dogs in the backyard. They have a dog door to go in and out whenever they want. And, and they're uh -huh. like taking down fences and going in the backyard and trenching through. And I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> but no, it's, it'll be now that we got that part done and the hookups yeah. come in Wednesday, it should be really good. I'm excited to finally have good internet here. You should do a, like, on your on your channel over there at Grams and Pops. Yeah, I was gonna mention Grams and Pops channel when you were saying how difficult it was to record and get back into the mode and yeah. some of your recent videos there about talking about how difficult it was to to uh get back <laughs> into the swing of things. There. Merry freaking Christmas or whatever, I think the one thumbnail <laughs> was. But um 
Yeah, you should do you should show some screenshots of your speed tests or whatever from now to oh, before and after when when you get that fiber because I'm I'm so they put fiber all through our town. They've been working and they um they you can get it now. It's available, but I haven't like pulled the trigger. I still have just like spectrum cable or spectrum like internet. But if I if I change over to something different, I have spectrum on my mobile phone. And so okay. you have to have mo you have to have spectrum internet in order to get the deal for the spectrum mobile phone or whatever. So unless I changed phone carriers, which is always a pain in the rumple still skin yeah. to do that. And but yeah, I'm excited for you getting the new I think that's funny. Yeah, you were telling me that story that you looked out looked outside one day and there was just guys out there digging a big trench across your property without even yeah. out when they came back, asking permission. Even after we kind of got after them about taking the fence down and and there being dogs that could get out and we live out in the country but we live by a highway. Yeah. And it you know about 2 days later they come back out with a truck to go hook up the box on the back side of the house to hook everything up. So they uh -huh. could do their testing and stuff. And they just walked in the backyard, just opened the gate and walked in. <laughs> like, that's just, guys, that's just, come that's on. bold. Of course. And is it a, a good uh, rate, like a, a cost uh, for it? Or yeah, is it's there about any cost the same. savings? Or? It's about the same we pay now. And, okay. and right now we don't have, there's nothing hardwired to that. The only hardwired thing mm -hmm. to this house is the electricity. Like there's no, there's no cable. There's no okay. phone, none of that. So really? they bring the internet in. We get our internet off of a Wi-Fi tower across the road. They're shooting okay. Wi-Fi over to our house is how they give us internet now. Wow, and you do live way out in the middle of nowhere. So it's Man, called Interlakes Wireless because they put up a big tower with a Wi-Fi transceiver on it and they shoot wireless out to Lake Madison over here to all the houses on Lake Madison. That's okay. how they get internet. So we're finally getting, we basically share a Wi-Fi router with like a hundred other people. That's what we have now. And it's pretty sketchy, but we'll finally get but, off of that. Same price. Yeah. Though, about the same price. Well, that, that's cool to upgrade from like a, an, an air wireless yeah. to direct fiber, man, that's going to yeah, be, when it's snowing outside, we just shut it off. Like the, you can't even stream on the TV when it's snowing outside because the, the Wi-Fi signal doesn't go through snow very well. Oh yeah. What now? Will you you'll be able to you'll be able to stream your TV and everything then off of the new fiber, right? Or yeah, the new fiber will be just a normal internet hookup now. So it'd be like living okay. in town. Okay. Well, that's the hope. I that's a that's a that's one phrase I never want to say in my whole life. Is it's just like living in town. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I'm if I'm more than like five minutes away from now, I don't live in a big city by any means. I got a really small city, but I can be from the end of my driveway to a parking spot at Walmart in like four minutes. And that's, that sounds horrible. That's about as out in the country as I want to get. Which there no, is a big farmer's field and stuff across right across the street from my house. What kind of I don't live like in in the city, but. Uh, I don't anyway. like seeing my neighbors. We've lived we've lived like in housing <laughs> developments right. for a long time to where your house is like right next to somebody else's. Yeah. And our whole plan since we were like 18 when we first got married was to get in a house where we didn't have neighbors and just okay. live out in the country where we didn't have to deal with I, if I look out my window when I'm having coffee and I see my neighbor having coffee, there's a problem. Yeah. I don't I don't like that. Yeah, my our houses are not that close. But yeah, we established earlier you are not a, a people person. So this probably <laughs> works out great for you. I'm um, a much better neighbor when I don't have neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> the the neighbors, you know, when they say, you know, a fence makes good neighbors, it's yep. your neighbors that are ones that are building the fences. Yes. I would they're assume. the ones that made that saying up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted I wanted to thank our seasonal sponsor though from you know the Christmas season, soft soap, the uh pe peppermint Good Lord, candy. You used a lot was, of that uh, soap. Well, I did. Well, this okay. Actually, what I'm gonna say is I had bought this last year, that gift pack that had the cookie, okay. the sugar cookie and the peppermint candy. And so this, and then I just put it away because I don't want to be pepperminty all year long. 
So this is, I got about that much left and that was like two seasons worth, but thank you to Soft Soap um, for their sponsorship that they they knew nothing about. The Soft Soap Corporation knew nothing about. Oh, and another, and we're back well, to normal. Well, the check reflected that. Look at, look at that. <laughs> it did. <laughs> did not, I think we owe the Soft Soap Company money. We might. For, uh, but look at this that I got for Christmas. Somebody that listens to the podcast really got me this gift for Christmas. And Wait, are they also related to you? Uh, well, yes, kind of. It's uh, Nancy. <laughs> it's just less Jill's, impressive. Jill's mother, Nancy, who enjoys and watches the podcast. Look at this. A five that pack, a, five pack of nice dude supply. wipes. And we'll, we'll have to see, you know, how long this lasts. Maybe I'll monitor. Maybe, you know, later in the year, we'll check in and see <laughs> we, how quickly. We should just have a I'm running stat counter. <laughs> Every day. But, man, the five-pack of Dude Wipes and my favorite, the Minty Chill. The Minty, the minty Chill. You kind of, you feel, you know, you kind of feel fresh down there. You know, you get that little bit of uh, fresh coolness when you're, um, you know, you're finishing up your... It's like Your a business. fresh layer of gold bond all the time. And so I'm I'm still waiting to hear back from I did reach out to the Dude Wipes company. And, they have and a no thing, response? you know, tried to get trying to get it, you know, in their ambassador program and and no response. Maybe it's just me, but uh <laughs> I, I don't know. But yeah, glad to have Dude Dude Wipes back uh, as a sponsor on the show. And uh See, yeah, there's not really much partake. that I can report. Why is that? I I can't partake with the dude wipes because we have a septic system and you're not supposed to use that uh, kind of thing with septic systems. See, that's another thing I never want to say in my life is I have a septic system. I don't Well, it's, there's that's one way to look at it. Well, another way to look at it to... is my my crap is not anybody else's problem but mine. <laughs> the, hey, that's a that's actually a good way to look at it, you know. It's a you know, mind your own business. Yep. Keep your. Uh, <laughs> I used you sound to sound like I run a compound here. It's not like my, that. Folks. It does. <laughs> it does. As speaking, you know, combat. Next thing you know, Corey's going to be trying there to get go. people to go on the <laughs> the hail bop comet from out there. It's this the compound in South Dakota. Careful if I start offering you Kool Aid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're going to move everybody down to Guyana. Hey, guys. I don't usually jump into a podcast like this, but because we've both now compared ourselves to someone who had, who formed kind of a cult following, I wanted to address that and assure you that based on the fact that we haven't been able to put together 600 subscribers on YouTube on this very podcast, that's something you guys don't have to worry about. So back to the show. But uh, hey, on a reseller, a resellery Resellery note. Resell celery is that good. I don't know if that's a word. Resellery. I'm certain it's not. I, it's probably not, but I think people understand what I'm talking about. On a yes. reseller topic note. I was okay. This was I don't know if it's a goal or if it's a milestone or whatever. But I was I was I thought it was pretty cool. I finally hit uh one thousand on my eBay feedback. You know, and it changes okay. that little star. And so now I got a red star. And yep. and I don't know if, you know, we've talked about feedback and stuff before. And, and I don't know how important feedback. I'd be interested in the, in the comments how what you think about feedback. Uh, it's yeah. one of those things that, um, you know, well, there's right good now, points. And ben <laughs> Why is that? We got we got the traditional christmas gift of feedback uh and we got one negative and we got one neutral over christmas so oh boo yeah right some now, of those returns of that that might come in are people that people that will leave that feedback that neutral or that negative before mm -hmm. like even reaching out and and contacting you and yeah, uh, none of these reached out they just well and some, it was uh, i the one wasn't the one wasn't anything like they didn't even say why they left a neutral. It was just neutral. Like it, I think they just woke up and they're like, eh. <laughs> just, just, everything's right in the middle today. I have that one neutral on mine. They came up a couple of weeks ago and I was trying to work with the buyer because they thought that they were leaving neutral feedback for the, for the platform and not for me. And, you know, I asked them, 
if they could go in and change it and they were going to go try to to change it and i had to put in like a revision request for yep. it and i and somehow that was like denied by ebay i didn't even get any correspondence it's just like the revision request had ended and they didn't do anything with it so i'm gonna have to live with that neutral at least it's not a negative but um it's still just a a, a black mark you know for me for me it, yeah. it makes no difference when people are looking at it and if they saw the actual feedback it said great uh great customer service was the actual <laughs> text that they put but it Not was too neutral. great apparently uh, well and but i did i provided excellent customer service the customer was on my side i'm just not sure what happened there but but i was super excited i looked at one day and i was at like 999 and i'm like oh man who's going to be my 1000th you know feedback and uh and so i was looking I think at it makes I'm a at, difference uh, i'm at a thousand and two i was excited when we turned over that thousand mark yeah and you know i think you know these days with that whole feedback system and rating and it's like the positive feedback maybe isn't as helpful or whatever or um as much as a negative feedback can be you know if you don't have that 100 percent rating i don't know okay as a buyer corey do you ever look at a seller's feedback when you're do. buying something yeah i mean i'm not sorting through it reading all your feedback because i don't care I just need yeah. to know if you're a good seller or a bad seller. Okay. I would say there's levels of it for me anyway. If I'm if I'm going to order something from somebody with less than 100 feedback, I'm probably going to scrutinize it a little bit and read a okay. few. Okay. And just see why they're not 100%. Yeah. Uh, probably that 100 to 1,000 range you, you feel pretty comfortable with, but it feels like you're ordering from like a mom and pop, like a small yeah. store. Yeah. And then once they, once they go over like that, 10,000 mark, you, you know, yeah. you, even I would even say like five to 10,000. Once you're over that mark, the perception is you're dealing with a fairly large, reputable business like Yeah, it, and you don't pay True. much attention to it because it feels like you're dealing with somebody that's been in business quite some time. So I think yeah. there are levels to it, but as far as the actual number, I mean, as long as you're above that 90 some percentile, you know, 97, 98 percentile, I would usually not pay much attention to it. Unless they're yeah. like all recent. True. Yeah. Within the last whatever. And I guess I never usually really read anybody's positive feedback because, well, it's positive. I figure they did the right thing. So if I do go to buy something myself and I'm going to look at somebody's feedback, if it's less than that 100%, I'm going to read the negatives and see what it was. Because some people will leave a negative at the drop of a hat. You know, they're, they're not... Yeah happy with the product and so you can read between the lines when you're reading those negative comments and see is this just one of those type of buyers that are going to complain right. about something i don't spend a lot of time on looking at feedback if i'm going to buy something um unless not unless yeah, something like said, stands out i mean it would, yeah something has to be abnormal or standing out for me to look at it or i have to be concerned about the product in some way yeah. Like if I if I thought the product looked a little bit questionable, I might check the feedback just to see how they handle problems. But usually, if something isn't standing out, it, the feedback tells me kind of who I'm buying from. Is it is it somebody new? Is it a small shop? Is it a big shop? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's when you said that about, about the it. new about the new. You know, for anybody that might be listening, or I guess when the 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 feedback really made a little bit of a difference was when you were a new seller, when you were first mm -hmm. starting and opening up your store and you had those, um, you know, zero, zero feedback, uh, you know, yeah, zero, feedback, one, two, ten. Feedback you doesn't matter the, unless you don't have any. <laughs> then it matters. Yes, exactly. Because then, you know, the scammers start to target yep. uh, new, new sellers and they see that. Now, I, I got that until you you know, I, we probably all got that until you can kind of get established and get, you know, 10, 20, 30 feedbacks under your belt. Yeah. It's, uh, you get well, less targets from the scammers. If I'm going to order something expensive from you, I, I'd be leery yeah. about the amount of feedback too. I mean, if you don't have over a thousand feedback, I'm probably not going to drop a couple grand on an item from oh, your yeah. store. 
You just yeah, exactly. haven't been around long enough to know how you're going to handle it. So I think the amount of feedback were, matters probably more than the actual feedback, as long as you're above that 90 some percent. Yeah, exactly. And I, you know, I would throw out there too, as far as, you know, okay, so I got over a thousand feedback now. Now that's not all necessarily from me being a seller. Cause I nope. get, I'm also a buyer on eBay. I like to support the platform. I like to buy a lot of my supplies and stuff from companies that sell on there rather than going out to Amazon, uh, just to, you know, support that platform that I sell on, make it a little bit stronger. But if, um, so some of my feedback, when, when somebody's looking at feedback, most of the time they just see that 100% and they see how many you have. Some of that mm -hmm. is from buying. And so right. I would throw that out, I guess, as an advice to a, a new seller or somebody getting into it. That is one good way to start to increase that feedback rating and get um to kind of help avoid some of those scammers is go out and be a buyer, be a buyer on the platform as well, especially, you know, a lot of the big companies that are that are established on there uh, are going to set up that automatic feedback as yeah. soon as you buy something from them, you're going to get that. And that shows in your score and, you know, keeps you at that that 100 percent and order and your eBay digital. supplies in your boxes and stuff. They're, they're yes. often automated and. Once you've paid for it and they ship, you get feedback pretty much immediately. So yeah, it, if you're gonna start out fresh, I would recommend buying some stuff first and just get some feedback going. Yes, exactly. Which is, you know, just a good tip. There, There's a free li free little tip from uh, the Reseller Clickbait Podcast. Go <laughs> We're be a buyer. Now. Be a buyer. We hey, I can guarantee if you buy something from my store, um, I'm going to leave a feedback. Oh, so, okay, Corey, as a seller, when do you leave feedback or do you leave feedback for your buyers? Yeah, always. Okay. Um, we what, we leave feedback, point? we set it up automatically. So as soon as they've paid and, okay. and we ship, it leaves, it leaves automated feedback. Okay. And it's just, for us, it just became, we were leaving feedback manually and it just became such a time sensitive thing like yeah. we, we spent so much time on it that it once we realized we could set it up automatic we did we hesitated for a while because we were we were like well what if we have a bad transaction or something and then we've already left yes. positive feedback but at, at some point that, we were you know the amount of bad transactions we have is so small if that happens yeah you know it just is what it is that's what you know when i first as a as a new seller i was that same way well i don't want to i don't want to leave feedback positive feedback for somebody that might yeah. going to return something or be a difficult buyer but in the end that doesn't really m matter as much you leaving the feedback for for it's somebody else you kind of learn that over time too. Yeah, of any sort of returns or whatever that I have. And and if somebody, if I have a difficulty with a customer um, and I've already left them positive feedback, hopefully if they see that they got positive feedback from me, they might be a little more willing to reach out first before. But I've been fortunate um, so far, you know, I, and part of that is just the way I run my business and the, and the customer service. If you try to work with somebody and you try to help and you were fair with your with your listing and your and your photographs and your descriptions, you're probably not going to have a lot of problems. There's just no, the ones, people out there the ones that want to throw. Do, yeah, the ones where you yeah. do have problems are generally those people that you're going to have a problem with anyway. Yeah, I mean they're exactly they're the guy that asked twelve questions about a three dollar and ninety nine cent <laughs> little littlest pet shop. Like those guys yes. are your problem, and and they're yeah. a problem before they ever hit buy. So exactly. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, because there are different. I see some people is like, oh, I never leave feedback at all. I never do that. It's either takes too much time. So there's the you know the automated route. Uh, I mm -hmm. used to wait. I see people that talk about as soon as the item is delivered to a person, they go back and leave the feedback. Which there's a lot of logistics to that, to keeping up on the packages, uh, and that's not you know a bad system. But if um, that's how it works for you. That's one way to do it. I see some people that only leave feedback for buyers that leave them feedback, kind of a reciprocal yeah. sort of a thing. And, uh, in my process, basically what I do, I'm, I haven't went automated yet, but I, at the time that I'm shipping, like as soon as I 
click the ship and and that I've labeled everything. I go back and it's, you know, there's that one column in your seller hub that and it says, you yeah. know, waiting for your waiting feedback. For and feedback. I just have random, you know, random feedbacks in there. And usually it's the same thing to everybody, you know, great buyer. Thank you for, you know, your support or whatever for purchasing the item, uh, that sort of thing. And it's a quick thing, but I don't do it automated because every now and then I want to send, if I had a good interaction or a good transaction with somebody, I might want to make that feedback a little bit more personal to them. Right. But that's very, very seldom that that happens. So most of the time, you know, 99.9%, .9 it's just that click the on can. the items that ship, go to the random thing, boom, push the button and it's done. And it kind of helps me kind of keep a monitor on what I, you know, what I've shipped and what went out and just yep. kind of my checks and balances and I have to and, check okay. on ours. I'm not. I can't remember if we set ours up to reply, like leave a review automatically once they've paid or once they receive. I'm thinking we did it once they receive, because I know okay. we had the conversation that if we if we could delay it a little bit, like wait till yeah. they receive, it gives them a reminder that hey, try to you know leave us a review too. Yes, it kind of gives them a reason to come on and leave us a review. I don't know if we ever switched it. I think we did. So. That was kind of the thinking behind it and rather we followed through i'll have to check yeah and that's a that's a good way that does give them that reminder now i know that ebay if i have forgot to leave as a buyer if i have forgot oh, yeah. to leave feedback for somebody you know whatever it is 30 days or it's a couple of weeks or something it, it's ebay sends you a reminder hey don't forget leave feedback for these items and okay there's one thing i don't understand in that whole interface a buyer has returned something or you had some sort of a of a thing and they want you then it comes back and says hey leave uh feedback for for these buyers even though i've already sent it i didn't leave feedback for them because they canceled the order before i shipped it it's like but they also don't give you the option to leave like a negative as a seller no. to leave like a negative or a neutral or something, because I don't want to put any sort of a positive in there because the reasoning is you canceled the order. You you know, yeah. it was on your end. You're the one that bought it and then canceled it right away. And I'm kind of that, glad they don't give us. I mean, I know a lot of people say they wish they would give us the opportunity to leave bad mm -hmm. feedback for a bad seller. I'm yeah. kind of glad they don't because I feel like I'm For sometimes I would have a mean? hard time restraining myself from leaving that <laughs> negative feedback and you shouldn't. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't want to be leaving bad feedback for buyers, even the crap buyers. I think if they're yeah. that bad, you report them and be done. Otherwise you just block them and move yeah. on. I've been, you know, fortunate that most all, okay. I've been fortunate that most all of my buyers are, have been good over i mean the yeah. overwhelming majority and i think that's probably the way for most all sellers that yep. your buyers are good of course when you watch on the youtube and you look at all the facebook groups and stuff everybody's always complaining you would think that every buyer out there was just horrible and well, most of those that's what most you, of those horror that's what stories yeah most of those horror stories you see aren't even buyers that's that's the thing i, I think i said that before yeah that's, those are those are people that are sending you a thousand questions and they're giving you grief and they're asking you questions and like they just and they're not buyers they yeah. don't buy so the uh, few I buyers another, that are a problem are very few exactly another aspect of the the feedback uh, especially if you're a new seller uh, and you know you kind of haven't really seen how things go is selling to somebody that has zero or no feedback. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess zero and no is the same thing kind or same, very yeah. low zero and, <laughs> and no. So you get like half. Low. <laughs> they have negative feedback completely. Is, you almost uh, have it. When you get an offer from somebody or you're going to sell out like maybe a, a high dollar item and the person has zero feedback and they maybe just created the account like that day. And there's always that hesitation about should I should I ship it? Should I send it? Should I do, you know, whatever? And I have found myself, it's a, I don't really concern myself with that anymore. I used to be as a new seller when I started, you know, several years ago, it was like that was a concern. One of my probably best transactions with a buyer 
was somebody that was a zero feedback that had just created the account that day and it was on a um a full uh rock band like guitar guitar drums the whole set still yep. in the in the package and everything you know on a high dollar item and they sent me a couple questions and i was you know hesitant or whatever but it ended up it worked out perfect they had just created their account because they were looking for something specific and yep. they weren't a normal ebay buyer and That's you know it. everybody starts at zero and i'm i'm the type of person that gives people the benefit of the doubt i always i inherently think everybody's good and I, that's not always the case. And every now and then it kind of bites you in the butt. And um, most are. Yeah. Most and are. So, I think that's a safe assumption most times. But no, with the zero feedback, I, I think it's because I knew that I'm maybe a little bit too trusting on that. That doesn't, it, it's never made me hesitate for a second because I still yeah. have that warm, fuzzy feeling that eBay has seller protection in place for a reason. And as long as I follow yes. the rules, I'm going to be okay. And, and yeah, nothing crazy it, bad can happen. So I, I kind of relied on that. But then also the new buyers are people that are coming from off site a lot of times. Yeah, people who aren't eBay people, they're coming from Google search or Bing search. And I'm yes. more disappointed that it's such a low percentage of them that we're seeing. I wish 80% of our sales were coming from off site from new people. Well, yeah, that would we're, be we're just not getting enough new people. Yeah, and that, and some of that, and we're not going to go into that, but some of that has to do with the promoted, promoting the listings and the way that, you know, your items are seen out there. Uh, I know you're getting, we'll talk about this later, but you're getting ready to do, we were talking off air about kind of promoted listing test mm -hmm. that you're going to do, like a 90 day thing. And, and so I'll be interested to talk about that later on and, and watch, you know, I imagine you'll cover that a lot on Grams and Pops Vintage channel. Probably not. Uh, when I... When I start talking about that stuff, when when we're doing our channel, her eyes just glaze over, so it's not very good content. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I'll, well, I'm interested in that stuff. We I'll just we let talk you know how it goes. A lot about businessy sort of stuff, and you know how strategies and plans and and things like that, and and stuff that we do, and uh, and I always enjoy those conversations. So I'll be looking forward to seeing what you're coming up with that and but you know as far as feedback is concerned you know everybody has a different opinion on that as well and i was excited to reach that thousand mark um and you know i i was monitoring and looking once i was at that like 998 999 and and <laughs> uh, my 1000th feedback was on a a little like a fiesta fiesta wear like a little mm -hmm. heart shaped red candy dish bowl sort of a thing not a big sale about oh 12 15 bucks something like that and be pressing uh, would it have been if the thousandth feedback came through as a negative <laughs> <laughs> yes Dude, this or, seller sucks <laughs> or something from you know having bought boxes from you know someplace yeah. or whatever but it was from an actual actual customer on an item. And again, that was an item that Jill found and gave to me because if I didn't have Jill out there sourcing for me, uh, I don't know if I would find any good stuff. But uh, our, no, our I find negative a lot of good feedback, stuff. Just, the the uh, negative one we got was because we sent the wrong Tupperware lid to somebody. Literally like a $4 Tupperware lid. Okay. And we sent, we had two of them different sizes. We sent the wrong one. That. That drives me crazy. Like it was our fault, so we deserve the negative feedback. But yeah, even after they left the feedback, and we reached out and we we're like, we have free returns. Let us send you the right one. They, yeah, they don't just want to. not. They don't, they don't want it. They just want to complain. <laughs> and they won't do a feedback revision for you. Or we didn't anything even ask like that. Yeah, we didn't oh, ask okay. for a feedback revision. Like we deserve the bad feedback. We we'll take that. But let yeah. us get you the right lid now. Like, yeah, let us send you the right one now, and they don't. They don't want anything to do with it. Well, and in the end, I mean, that's that's what it's all about is that customer service. And if you're wanting, you know, the good feedback or just if you don't really care about feedback at all, just having good yep. customer service is is the key to this business or any business. And um, so, yeah, I think um, I'm excited for the live tour show this Thursday night um, I'm looking forward to with it. the two old guys 
reselling podcast, Chris and Corey, or no, Chris and Corey. I'll be here. Chris and yeah. Kayla. Chris, okay. Chris <laughs> will be here. Chris Old School Picker will be here. Corey Grams and Pops will be here. Caleb, the old Pats, my best friend. I might have a, I might have a gift sitting right over there. For my friend, I've heard Caleb. Corey's a good guest. Yeah, I've I've heard that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not much of a host, but you know, he, horrible he host in the good in the in the guest role. But um, yeah, we're back into things. I'm looking forward to getting back to work. You know, clean shaven Santa season. I know you're happy, Corey, that the Santa season yep. is is past, and I won't talk about that constantly. And you need uh, a little well, bit of that, that bad Santa scruff. And then yeah. we'll be we'll be back in business. That'll probably be you know by the next episode. Hell, even maybe even by Thursday night. You know, today's only Sunday. By Thursday night, I'll probably be looking a little scruffy. My I grow. <laughs> uh, well, I just I don't understand, man. I can grow this, but what? Look, nothing, nothing up here. That's gravity. All that hair went out. this way. Maybe I need to start going. I wonder if I like went. Like that, like a whole that just maybe it would push it out the top and not out the. You're more likely to bottom. push something out the bottom doing that. <laughs> oh, and you know what I would do for that? <laughs> yeah, dude, you're wipes. stocked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go with dude wipes. So, Corey, we're gonna wrap up this first episode of the 2024 of 2024. Uh, Happy New Year to you, my friend. Happy Back New Year you. to everybody. Um, hopefully your, your year will be, uh, profitable. Hopefully when you start to run, you know, those year end numbers for your taxes and stuff, you had a great 2023 and would like to hear, you know, some of those goals, uh, down in the comments that you have coming for 2024. Again, if you watch the live tour show on Thursday night, that will be, um, all, all about that sort of stuff. So we're looking forward Break to interacting with you there, uh, have some, have some prizes to give away. And um, Corey, any any last words on this That's... New Year's Day, January the 1st, 2024? I think we're good. Happy New Year. And yeah, I can't, I can't wait for the live tour and jump on there and talk about some goals and stuff. I'm excited yeah. for that episode. So yeah. Yes. I, th I think that's it for today. Let's let them get All out right. of here and go, go do some celebrating. Yes, for sure. Everybody be safe and we will see you next time on the Reseller Clickbait Podcast. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I will end If you this come recording. back with braids and a yellow beard looking like a Viking, that's going to be wrong. <laughs> Another Christmas has come and gone and time to say goodbye to the seasonal Santa.